the most important thing you will do in the next 160 days? Most important, by far, nothing compares to finish the film. On Friday, September 9th, 2016, our senior class gathered in the Greenfield Garden Cinema, where our teachers issued a challenge. Over the next 160 days, our class was going to write, film, and edit an original documentary on a local energy issue. To kick off this challenge, local filmmaker Steve Alves taught us about filmmaking and helped us understand the scope of our task. You know what your theme is, and you have to mine it, and deliver it, and tell it. The first part of this project involved building background knowledge. We learned the technical aspects of energy generation in physics and math. In civics, we learned systems mapping to understand the relationships between social, economic, and environmental aspects of the energy crisis. With this knowledge, we divided into teams to research different energy case studies. And other local colleges. Um, so then stakeholders. We're going to have it be uh, the title slide. Benny's putting comments on it. Really we met with experts related to our topics, then conducted a board meeting to choose our documentary topic. We decided our documentary would be about the divestment movement on college campuses. To better understand divestment, we conducted a public forum style debate tournament. Having to research and defend both sides of the issue helped us understand the complexity of the topic. From here, we were ready to write our documentary. I was part of the story group, and we came up with a story for the documentary, like an arc, a train, um, a plot. I kind of moved into writing the actual script and coming up with the story and the train and how we wanted our movie to flow. This chapter to be like colleges are still working basically. I was pretty proud about how our train of the story came out and how we figured out what's going to go where and when. We were hoping to show kind of probably the most climactic footage or some of it um, right at the beginning of the movie and have generally point out how student activism has been a strong part of a lot of activism. With a completed story arc and chapter outline, we were prepared for filming. Greenfield Community Television trained us on professional video cameras and sound equipment. In English class, we completed a film study unit to learn shot composition and cinematography. I'm photographing my models. So much fun. <laughs> One of the biggest things was learning actually how to use the cameras because I had never used cameras like that before and that was a lot of fun to learn how to use them. In mid-December, we traveled to colleges across Massachusetts to film B-roll and conduct interviews with students and professors involved in the divestment movement. I'm tuning out the, yeah, that makes sense. Got, okay, cool. Shotgun's on. Okay. Yeah. This is Northeastern. They have a lot of really nice murals. We've just been getting um, filler shots most of the campus because our interview is later on. One highlight of our field work was the Divest BU rally. The BU rally was definitely Part. Like when I went to that, I was like, wow, I want to go to college and I want to protest and rally and march. I want to do it all. So that kind of got me super inspired going there. During our filming, we were also early on the scene of a protest at TD Bank in Amherst, where activists had chained themselves to the bank to protest TD Bank's investment in the Dakota Access Pipeline. After filming, we had to organize all of our footage and transcribe hours of interviews. First number is how many times you just like you use the tape. Yeah, it's a tape number. So Tufts Bridge, this is the third Tufts Bridge picture that we have. The story team returned to their narrative arc, working to transform the outline into a complete script. Yeah, yeah. So I think we should lead up to the rallies with that because okay. it's, the rally is like like I don't it's think we should make it trivial. Like many rallies makes it seem very trivial. So right now I'm doing a uh, documentary kind of storyboard. I'm taking what the story writing group yeah. is mm -hmm. doing, putting down in a script and translating it into visuals and audio effects mm -hmm. uh, for basically a plan out uh, shot by shot, uh, scene by scene of how we put our movie together essentially. Once that was complete, we held auditions for the documentary narrator. Recording the script, like everything else, had its own set of challenges. The most recent drama is that we've had to re record the ending like four times, five times now. The first time, it just didn't have the right content. The second time, it was really, there was like a lot of white noise in the background. The third time, someone was like slamming doors and we couldn't use the content. And now they're re-recording it again and hopefully 
This time it will work. During the editing process, the archival footage team was responsible for finding B-roll necessary for our film. This task proved much more difficult than we initially anticipated. With archival footage, we had to learn how to find archival footage, which was hard. When archival footage first started, it was because we didn't exactly know where we could find everything and like what we could use, what we couldn't. So there was a lot of like medium ground where we didn't know. And so it just was a very slow start when everybody needed stuff immediately. So that was really difficult <laughs> on both an emotional and physical level. Archival footage, I want you to put the chapter in, your name so I can find you if I need to talk to you about it, and what you need. And if you absolutely cannot move forward without archival footage, I want you to put it in red. Our first week, we just found all this footage and emailed a bunch of people, and then quickly realized that no one was going to email us back. So I worked a lot on finding videos that we could use without having to contact anyone. My whole section uh, is Harvard B-roll, or needs Harvard B-roll, and I don't have any of it. So I'm currently scrounging for the scraps of the internet. I'm waiting for B-roll to appear that it's not anywhere. The struggles is not having anything to do and being stuck waiting for more. Archival footage. We were so behind, I had to spend the whole snow day putting archival footage in the document. We found like over a hundred videos for archival footage, so that was pretty accomplishing. And, like when we were all done, it felt very good to be like, wow, this is going to be a lot of our movie. The majority of students were editors, working in Adobe Premiere to piece together chapters of the film. Yeah, I'm working on the conclusion, making all the B-roll match up with the narration. Like any complex project, we faced frequent technical difficulties. I'm starting over <laughs> because I unplugged my computer after it was charging all day and it shut off and everything's gone. At several points during editing, we came together to view the in-process chapters and give each other feedback. There's some rough transitions, and I didn't do any titles or anything good like that. Our film also needed a title. To make sure the title would work, we conducted some localized market research. Today was part of a very extensive research project to find out if people know what Fossil Free is referring to. So we went around to various faculty members and read the first option to them, with, uh, so Fossil Free without fuel after, and then asked them what they thought a Fossil Free future meant. Um, nine out of the 11 said that it meant a Fossil Fuel Free future. It went really well, and we got title down and I think my research was crucial for that. So fossil free is a term that like is associated with fossil fuels oh. and the data shows that uh, <laughs> it works. The numbers are in people. Oh, wow. <laughs> with the rough cut edits complete, our film moved into the last stage, final editing. Now I'm going to be one of the final editors which is both super exciting and terrifying because I have so many things to do and no time to do it. Um, so I'm gonna figure that out. It was better than it did, so I'm gonna have you do that to his face. With the premiere approaching, we faced a new challenge, snow. As the final editors pushed to complete the film, February brought multiple snowstorms that hindered production. Anticipating a snowstorm just days before the premiere, the final editors brought home one of the school computers to complete the project. In the 160 days since we first sat in the Garden Cinema with Steve Alves, we've learned quite a bit. Content-wise, I've learned essentially everything I know about polished divestment because I hadn't heard of that before we started this project. Um, after interviewing and doing the debates, I learned a lot more about what an actual endowment was before. Like, I knew what the word was, but I couldn't explain it to you. So I learned a lot about the finances. That was like the content that I probably learned the most. In addition to content, this project has taught us a number of technical skills. Definitely trial and errored my way into a basic knowledge of how to work with Premiere. We've also learned about working in groups, one of the most challenging aspects of any project. Being with this class for like basically six years-ish, I've really been able to just come to them, like all of them, with work stuff. I'm just like, okay, you need this, I can get you this. 
as like an archival footage person and as a data manager. So it's helped me a little bit with like, a little bit with my leadership skills. Being a leader is hard, but that's how you learn. I probably learned the most skills in terms of working with a group <laughs> um, and how to balance what needs to be done and spreading that out. I learned a lot about, uh, yeah, group work. I learned a lot. Communication is key. We've had a lot of issues where the archival footage people thought that we really needed something when actually no one needed it or people would say, yeah, I'm waiting for archival footage or I'm waiting for an animation, but they never actually communicated with the animation or archival team that they needed this or they thought they did, but the communication wasn't clear enough. I learned it was like really important to like communicate with the other groups instead of just kind of like going off on your own and waiting until you need help from somebody. Also communicating with the other editors so you don't film or edit the same. As the premiere approaches, we're all looking forward to seeing the results of our hard work, the finished documentary. I mean, you gotta rise to the occasion when you take on uh, a big challenge like this. Really a hard work to make a movie. And finishing it is the accomplishment. Definitely looking forward to seeing the whole film come together. Seeing the work that we've done, because it's been bits and pieces, and now we get to see all of it put together. It's almost completely done, and it looks awesome. It's really cool that we get to do this for school and I literally get to spend hours just playing with a camera and I get a grade on it. And it's literally part of my education. <laughs> awesome!